Okay, we continue section 15.5. Uh, speak harmonics now. Talk about some of uh, the properties of the speak harmonics. So last time we already written down the definition of the speak harmonics. YLM basically is the product of the associated legenda function and the exponential function with the co coefficient in front basically to make the uh, speak harmonics uh, awful normal so that uh, make it easier in terms of writing it as an expansion um, now we can continue some properties so from last time uh, the discussion why we get the YLM is because we are solving the uh, the partial differential equation involving Laplacian. So if you follow that discussion, you can see right away that the YLM can be regarded as an eigenfunction of the Laplacian operator. And actually, it's the Laplacian operator times the R square Laplacian, or the negative of that one. Okay, we operate on YLM. Then uh, the eigenvalue is simply L times L plus 1. Okay, so that is uh, an, an eigenfunction of this operator. Okay, and uh, this, YLM, this uh, eigenvalue is uh, just for L, so for different M. For the same L, you have the same eigenvalue, so the eigenvalue is, is degenerate. Okay, and another way to write it is uh, in uh, actually in chapter 16, we talk about that uh, is defining in a operator like that, square of that, the y l m. This uh, in terms of uh, in the context of quantum mechanics, this is the angular momentum operator. You operate on YLM, will give you this eigenvalue. Okay, so that's uh, one basic property of this uh, YLM function. Okay, and uh, there's uh, one more property of this uh, uh, YLM from this form directly, is the relationship between YLM and YL minus M. You remember that uh, for the associated Legendre fun function, the relation between PLM and PL minus M is uh, they are proportional, and the proportionality co proportionality constant is kind of a little bit complicated. If you just write it down uh, again, so if you write PL minus m, right, bit, minus m, they are equal, it is equals to uh, minus 1m, l minus m factorial, l plus m factorial, pl, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, the relation between the two. But for YLM, because of this uh, definition of the constant defined in front, the uh, if you write uh, found the YL minus M, so YL minus M becomes a uh, you just substitute everything here using minus M that becomes. 2L plus 1 over 4 pi, it's become L plus M factorial, L minus M factorial, and you have this PL minus M, which is you can substitute into here, so you have uh, minus 1M, L minus M factorial, L plus M factorial. L, M. Okay, 
and then e to the minus i m okay if you substitute everything here is this this one now uh, this factor is basically the same factor in front except that this is there's a square root here you can combine them so you have minus one m two l plus one to four pi becomes l minus m factorial l plus m factorial L M e to the minus i and phi okay but this one is basically this one except this minus m uh, minus 1 to the m power and then this m changed to minus m in the exponential function so basically it's this one so we can get back to y l m by taking just a complex conjugate l m okay because we assume theta and phi is a wheel so we take the complex conjugate only change the i to minus i over there so, so this is a, a kind of a much easier relationship why l minus m and y l m this relationship is easier than easy, at least easier to memorize than the relationship between plm and pl minus m okay so this is one uh, property and then there are other properties listed uh, in the last part of this section so in the textbook there are some first of all there are some special value which are quite straightforward you can look at them uh, yourself basically it's uh, when theta is zero and pi and that's followed but just uh, going back to the x co uh, notation x is 1 and minus 1 in the associated legend function so those values are we can get those uh, quite easily then there are the recurrence formula okay this basically is following the recurrence formula for the associated legend function and except that this becomes uh, the form becomes uh, a little bit uh, more complicated than the corresponding recurrence formula for the associated legend function basically this is due to the fact that it's defined with this uh, complicated coefficient in front so basically you pay a price for that but uh, what you gain in is that uh, you have an awful normal condition this YLM form an awful normal set okay so and so Equation 15.150 and 151, they are, they are from the corresponding recurrence formula for the associated general function. And uh, yes, the derivation is straightforward, but uh, it's kind of a, a good exercise to check that because the coefficient is so, so complicated, so you might want to actually check whether those uh, listed in your textbook are correct or not so basically we can start by start from the uh, recurrence formula for the uh, associated legend function so basically for the first one you start from equation 15.88 so you start from 15.88 then this is 2L plus 1 X PLM equals to L plus M PL minus 1 M plus L minus M plus 1 plus 1 PL plus 1 M Okay, so this is uh, the recurrence formula for this uh, PLM, and this one, this formula is basically for the same M but uh, changing different L. We'll see uh, this whether this will give you the form of fifteen one fifty. So let's see uh, what we have. 
say compare this uh, with the definition of y l m because all these are of the same m, so we can actually multiply by the uh, e to the i m phi and the both the left hand side and the right hand side, then change those to y l m except you need to pay attention to the normalization constant in front because uh, they are of different L and the constant has the L dependence in that uh, in the definition so we need to be a little careful and then uh, this X is basically just cosine theta so we can write it uh, as uh, 2L plus 1 cosine theta now this is PLM is basically just that uh, you can change that back to YLM with the coefficient in front so and then uh, so that basically reverse that so basically change that to and you can forget about the square root of 4 pi because that doesn't change when you are applying to both sides so this becomes L plus M factorial and then 2L plus 1 L minus M factorial this change Y L M okay so this becomes that one okay now for this one we have L plus M times the same thing except that now this is L minus 1 so when you do this, the everything L here changes to L minus 1. So this becomes a L plus M minus 1 factorial. And then the 2L plus 1 becomes a 2L minus 1 plus 1 becomes 2L minus 1. And that is a L minus m minus 1 factorial y l minus 1 m and then press this l minus m plus 1 do the same thing except that uh, whenever you see l change to l plus 1 so you have l plus m plus 1 factorial this becomes a uh, 2L plus 3 and then L plus L minus M plus 1 factorial and then Y L plus 1 M okay now you can do a simplification okay so uh, in the form of your textbook, basically put this all this factor go into the other side, keep only cosine theta. And one more thing is uh, this, you can multiply this inside, so this 2L plus 1 is over the other side. So it's inside the square root, so cosine theta YLM equals to. Okay, so. Uh, this one, uh, when you cancel, when you divide this into here, the L plus one, M factorial go into the in denominator, so basically cancel the L plus M minus one uh, factorial except the L plus M. Okay, so you have L plus M over here, and but then the L plus M, this L plus M factor in front so you put in the the square root becomes square root of L plus M. Okay, so that becomes square root of L L plus M. So that take care of that. And you put this one in the the other side and cancel this except the L minus M factor. So you have L minus M. And then uh, there's a 
this will this two L plus one will go into inside the uh, back cancel with that and divide it to the other side. So you have a uh, two L plus one over here, and then you have a two L minus one over here. So it's y L minus L. That should be the first term in the uh, equation 15.150 L plus M, M minus M, 2L minus 1, 2 L plus 1. So that is the first term. And the second term, do the same thing. So now consider that one by one. So you have this divided by to the other side. You cancel everything. Cancel this one except the L plus M plus 1 term. So we have the L plus M plus 1 over here. And this one multiplied by the other side cancel everything except the L minus M plus 1 factor. But yet this is the same as that you pull into here inside. So you have L minus M plus 1. And same thing here, 2L plus 1 divide to the other side, so 2L plus 1, and then this, this factor 2L plus 3, and then YL plus 1. Yeah. Okay, so this one should be the second, second one, yeah. I mean, I, the order is different, but then it's this, the, this one is the first term in 15.150. This is the second term, but uh, the coefficient of right. Okay, so this is this is uh, 15.150. Okay, so uh, the next one is actually from. Uh, again from the other the recurrence formula for the associate agenda function we can now follow the same thing and do the same thing here so let's copy the one associate agenda function so the other one is uh, this is 15 point 190 or one 189 or 190 depends on which one you want to use. So we'll, we'll just do one of them. So 15.89. So that is your 2L plus 1, 1 minus x squared root PLM equals to. PL minus 1, M plus 1, minus P, L plus 1, M plus 1. Okay, so this is that. Uh, so we're doing the same thing, substitute everything, except that none, M are not the same, so we have M, M plus 1, and M plus 1. In order to get YLM, say for the right hand side, you multiply by e to the i m plus 1 phi. If you multiply by the same thing in here, e to the i m plus 1 phi, so e to the i m phi will combine with this. If you give, get your YLM, but you have an extra e to the i m, e to the i phi out. Okay, so you get uh, 2L plus 1. And this is basically sine theta. So sine theta, and we have the extra e to the i phi out, okay? And then you do the same thing, express whatever left uh, into uh, YLM, which we have already done in here, so you, you copy, copy it here, so you press M, factorial, 2L plus 1, L minus M factorial y L M equals to this two. Now this two now you already multiply e to the i m plus one phi both sides so you can change to this one. But now uh, your L L is changed to L plus one, M changed to 
m plus 1, so you need to, to be slightly different from these two. So the first one you get uh, square root of uh, so l plus 1, l change to l minus 1, m change to m plus 1, so basically this one cancel, you will still have l plus m factorial. And then you divide this to L plus 1, but then uh, L change to L minus 1 becomes 2L minus 1. And then L minus M, L change to L minus 1, uh, minus M, M change to M plus 1, so minus M minus 1, so it becomes L minus M minus 2. Okay. Y L minus one L plus one. But that's this term. I'm going to do the same thing for this term. Okay. And now L change to L plus one, M change to M plus one. So do the same thing. So this factor you multiply to the other side becomes L plus M plus 2 factorial and uh, 2L plus 1 changes to 2L plus 3 and L plus M uh, it, uh, L minus M divided to this side so both are plus 1 so basically keep it the same L minus M factorial and then Y this is L plus 1 M plus 1 okay so now you do the same thing and uh, can't do cancellation. The right hand side following a textbook is um, the, uh, just keeping sine theta e to the i phi times uh, this ylm. So this is uh, let's see, e to the i phi. So yeah, right there, right. sine theta e to the i phi. Y L M equals to okay, and in your textbook, of course, is uh, there's e to the minus I M five, which is instead of using for fifteen point eighty nine, you use fifteen point ninety to get that. But uh, we will use uh, we we'll do do it just do this one, so um, that one. So you notice uh, some cancellation. So this again t two L plus one multiply inside the square root cancel with this one. So for the first term L plus M factorial totally cancel. You multiply L minus M factorial inside, cancel this one with two terms left, so L minus M and L minus M minus one. So the denominator now have L minus M times L minus M minus one. Okay, and now the denominator one is this 2L plus 1 factor divided to the other side. You have 2L plus 1, and then this term 2L minus 1, and YL minus 1, M plus 1. And then, uh, then you have this. Uh, this term, the second term. Now, the L minus M factorial cancel with this one. So do the same thing. This divided by the other side, so you have uh, this L plus M plus 2 times L plus M plus 1 left for this factor. And the denominator, you have this 2L plus 1 factor and 2L plus factor multiplied by y l plus one. Let's see. Uh, plus one m plus one. Okay. okay. So let's see. We got this uh, correctly. So this supposedly is uh, the the first term in the textbook is this one l plus one m plus one. You have l plus m plus 1 and l plus m plus 2 divided by uh, 
to L plus 1 to L plus 3. So this is that it, with the negative sign and the positive sign in this term, you have y L minus 1m plus 1. You have L minus m, L minus 1 minus 1 to L plus 1 times 2 L minus 1. So this is, uh, this is 15.151 part of it. So this is the first one multiplied by the e, r, e to the i phi. The same thing you can prove for the e to the minus i m e to the multiply by e to the minus i phi and get the, the other part of this uh, equation by using 15.90. Okay, but um, let's, uh, at least we know the how you do this kind of thing. So this kind of a uh, recurrence formula, so you have this one and that one that uh, although a little bit complicated, but uh, this uh, allowed you to construct uh, the uh, YLM function start from the some lowest one, some those the textbook listed some of the lowest uh, YLM, so like in table 15.4. So quite obviously by this definition Y0 zero, zero is just a constant in front. So it's just one over square of four pi. Okay. And then uh, and so on and so forth, and you can use uh, some of these uh, recurrence formula to construct, keep constructing higher order in L and higher order in M. So, and listed uh, for different uh, speaker harmonics. One thing is uh, in that table, other than using theta and phi, you can there are the relation in the Cartesian coordinate, which is just converting cosine theta and sine theta, sine phi, cosine phi into x, y, z. So basically, uh, cosine theta is very obviously is just the z coordinate divided by r. This, this is just the spherical coordinate, definition of spherical coordinate. Uh, okay, and then the, if you have sine theta, sine theta times like a e to the I phi or minus I phi e to the plus or minus I phi phi. So e to the I phi is cosine phi plus I sine phi and sine theta cosine phi is x sine theta sine phi is y. So this is just basically uh, one of our all. I mean, sine theta is cosine phi times r is x, so this so divided by r, so you have x plus or minus i y. Okay, so you can do that uh, and convert all the y l n depends on theta and phi because they are always depends on sine theta cosine theta, and always it have this e that i. Uh, plus or minus i phi to a certain power, so that you can allow you to convert to the Cartesian coordinates and write the spherical coordinate in terms of Cartesian coordinate. So that is uh, why you get the, the other kinds of relation. And okay, so the last property list in your textbook is uh, equation fifteen point one fifty two, which is quite straightforward. Basically, this is coming from this relation and uh, using the orthogonal uh, condition uh, that uh, last time we talked about of a normal condition. So the integration with like with this one with a YLM complex conjugate or YL pi M pi complex conjugate then that uh, convert that to uh, using this you can becomes two terms multiplied by this y l pine m pine and integrate over theta and phi and then uh, you get uh, two terms uh, 15.15 52 each term depends on some uh, quantical delta so and then the coefficients are given by these two so now uh, the so this is quite straightforward so I won't uh, go into the derivation here. 
So that will conclude this section and actually I uh, will conclude our discussion on chapter 15 because the next section I will skip over. Okay, so actually we are uh, uh, this 15.66 uh, section I will skip over. Um, this is for the gender function which uh, we won't go into detail. This is basically for the situation when uh, you have a problem that um, you don't involve the whole range of theta and theta doesn't go from 0 to pi um, there are, you need other kinds of functions so the Legenda function associated Legenda function just uh, basically it's just one solution of the Legenda associated Legenda equation you have another solution so to form a uh, the two solution for the second order equation and uh, but that is uh, for the situation that you involve not the whole range of theta so we'll skip over and then we'll next time we we'll talk about other things